Hoppin had to walk around and look at a pot, and look at the colors, guess what was wrong with the pot most of the time. The old way was a lot, is, it was real time consuming. I mean, you had to go out and check your pots at least every hour to keep up with them, and you would still lose carbon because you wouldn't know. You might walk by a pot now and not even see anything happening. But with the system we got now, you can, you can get an idea that something's going wrong earlier. Ever since the early days of Hall and Haro, aluminum producers have been searching for ways to improve the process. With the many variables involved in making aluminum, it didn't seem humanly possible to really control all aspects of the production of quality metal. That's where the newest tool of the trade came in, automatic process control systems. By using computer technology to handle the routine elements of pot operations, highly skilled people were finally able to focus their strengths where they were really needed. It took the human element to increase pot line efficiencies and production. I think you can probably look at it similar to, to all of us that have a VCR at home. I don't think any of us have to understand how uh, you put video or, or audio images onto tape. Uh, all we have to know is, is what it's capable of doing and how to do it and how to use it. Uh, we don't have to understand how the insides work. To use a computer, one doesn't have to understand how it works inside. What they have to do is understand what's its capability, um, what its functions are, and how you use those functions, and, uh, and what it can tell you and, and how it can help you. Automatic process control systems can't run a pot line by themselves. They're just tools designed to help operators and managers run their pot lines more efficiently. The computer takes care of routine pot line system controls. It maintains proper voltage inputs and ACD or anode cathode distance. It feeds the pot just the right amount of alumina ore at just the right time and quickly responds to identify and deal with anode effects. Computerized systems can include special routines that simplify tapping a pot, for example. So, automatic process control systems make the day-to-day -day job easier, but they are also a tool for successful operations in the long term. The computer continuously collects information and can report on each pot's individual behavior. Operators review this data to learn more about the needs of each cell on the line. They can then make better decisions and identify potential problems. The Cell Troll System is an automatic process control system that's helping people run pot lines more efficiently on four continents. Cell Troll Systems monitors several different designs of aluminum reduction cells ranging from 1942-era horizontal stud Soderbergs to large, modern prebakes. So I think the Celtrol system, besides coordinating and tying all the uh, process control, all the, all the control functions into one box, it's also allowed us to do other things that we probably could not have done without it. Um, if you take a look at where we are in terms of power utilization, uh, since I started here in 1980, we have probably reduced power utilization per pound. The amount of, amount of electricity that we need to make one pound of aluminum, we've probably uh, reduced that by about 15 percent. Um, and when you think of electricity for the aluminum industry, it's obviously a raw material. It's, uh, we, we spend millions of dollars a month on, on power. And so by reducing that by 15%, we're saving quite a bit. To automatically control cells, the cell troll system uses a microprocessor or pot controller for each cell, a communications buffer for groups of pot controllers, and a supervisory computer that links all the technology into a complete system. The pot controller collects data while it performs the basic functions of cell control. Some of the information it gathers is available for the operator's immediate use. It controls the resistance in each cell. The communications buffer handles all communications between the pot controllers and the supervisory computer. 
the supervisory computer gathers information from all of the pot controllers. It archives the data and can be used to communicate with individual pot controllers through CRT terminals. It investigates trends and develops statistics. Then the supervisory computer can respond with timely reports and operator five, messages. Six, five, room, three, six, zero. Steltrol is a device that you use to uh, make your job easier. It uh, is a computer that uh, controls the day-to-day -day routine activities on the cell and supplies you with uh, feedback information as to how that cell is behaving and whether or not uh, you need to intervene to prevent problems from occurring. And it uh, points out to you which cells need your attention rather than you spending your day looking and trying to find problems on every cell. It narrows that field for you so that you can concentrate your effort where it's really needed and do your job more efficiently. When a pot runs into a problem, the cell troll system will first attempt to correct it. A message appears on the CRT alerting the operator to the situation. If the problem can't be corrected automatically, the cell troll system can generate a radio or audio message to sound the alarm. Automatic process control systems can handle many normal pot operations, as well as exceptions to the standard routines. To automatically control the voltage in each cell, Cell Troll monitors the line amperage and pot voltage, then adjusts the anode cathode distance to maintain the proper resistance. For normal automatic voltage control operation, the actual voltage must be within range. The mode switch is in the auto position and the AVC switch on. If the pot voltage drops too low, or if the panel doesn't receive an amperage signal, the AVC light will flash and the operator will hear a warning. Six, five, six, five, room three, six, zero, voltage. There's even a routine to control the noise or unstable voltage that can cause a loss in current efficiencies. When a pot is judged noisy, Voltage is added to the set point at regular intervals until a maximum of 0 .30 volts has been automatically added. If this doesn't control the noise, a warning is heard. To prevent overfeeding or mucky pots, the system controls the amount of alumina ore being fed into each cell in the pot line. Cell Troll has special feed routines called Search and Starve designed to keep each pot clean and efficient. The search routine prevents overfeeding by turning off the ore feed every 3 to 12 hours without forcing an anode effect. Search removes the excess alumina in the pot. The starve routine forces an anode effect on each pot at regular intervals by extending the feed cycle. This gradually starves the pot of alumina. Celtrol also detects and can even terminate anode effects, minimizing any adverse effects on heat balance and efficiency of the cell. The anode effect termination routine uses a combination of anode movement and extra feed, usually extinguishing anode effects within the first minute. The AET routine takes priority over automatic voltage control and normal feed cycles. When the pot is in manual, during tap, or if the AET switch is off, the operator is alerted with an audio message. When the aluminum metal is tapped from the cell, the system helps maintain pot voltage at the set point for optimum operation. The tap routine avoids anode effects. After the anodes are first lowered, tap lowers them more approximately every 18 seconds as needed to control pot voltage. There are two displays on the cell troll panel at each pot. The top display is the cell voltage reading. The bottom shows the selectable four-digit display. With this selector switch, the items to be displayed are chosen. The AET switch serves to operate or disable automatic anode effect termination. The AVC switch controls whether automatic voltage control is on or off. The tap and duct end feed switches serve to control feed at the specified ends. 
The brake switch when on allows the breaker to brake. When off, the breaker cannot. And this is the mode switch. In the auto position, the computer has control of the pot. In the manual position, data continues to be collected, but the pot is under complete manual control. When this AET light is on, the anode effect termination routine has been activated. If the AET routine is unsuccessful, this light will flash. Even when the AET switch is off and the pot is running on manual, this light will glow to alert the operator if the pot reaches anode effect voltage levels. The AVC light goes on when the automatic voltage control is activated. This light will flash when voltage drops below approximately 1.6 volts or when the pot has trouble receiving the line amperage signal. When the search routine is in progress, the search light comes on. During accelerated feed, this light flashes after the search. The starve light is on when a starve routine is in progress. It stays lit until an anode effect is detected. The noise control light indicates when a routine is in progress. The light stays on until all noise control voltage has been removed. If the routine is not successful, the light will flash. Finally, the acknowledge button. Once a situation has been corrected, pushing this button will clear the lower display of the warning. As a fully distributed system, Celtrol features operational independence. The remainder of the system continues to operate without interruption, even if one component fails. This ensures minimum downtime. It's like any other, any other tool that, that you use. It's there for your use, and it can be as beneficial as you want it to be. When Celtrol was first uh, installed, it was envisioned as just being a replacement for uh, wearing out the analog system, but uh, we've never given up on development of Celtrol. By working with the operators and the management and the pot lines, we continue to refine the strategies that the Celtrol box runs and continually improve the performance of our cells. To compete, to survive, to succeed, aluminum producers in today's global marketplace continue searching for ways to reduce costs and increase efficiencies. The long history of refining the process of aluminum reduction has always meant exploration for new tools. Tools like automatic process control systems that help men and women operate the pot lines of the world.